All right. So it's a kingdom, a kings of war battle report. Um, this is the fifth round of the Explorers Universal Battles GT. Um, so it's 2300 and we're playing the uh, Fool's Gold scenario. Um, so any of you guys who are playing the Explorers GT would know that um, it's a pre-made setup. So it's a pre-made battlefield. And then, um, yeah, we just go from there. So getting into my kingdoms of men, um, I ran this last time. This is the no shooting list. So I've got um, I've got some pikes with the dragon shard shield. I've got foot guard. Um, I've made some tweaks where I've actually given the foot guard indomitable will and uh, the hammer of measured force. Uh, two regiments of militia mob, kind of standard for me. Uh, fanatics with the old, the uh, blood of the old king, kind of standard for me. Knights with boots, standard. Running my chariot legion again, and I have them with the brew of haste. They did, they did well for me last game, so we'll see how they do this turn this game. And then yeah, um, running double giant, um, and then standard bearer with loot. Three heroes mounted, and I have the captain unmounted. So that's. 14 units in a total of 26 unit strength. Um, so my opponent, uh, he's running, um, you know, this is like, this is the army that I, I'm, you can start to see why I'm switching away from some of like the shooting and bringing in the giants, because this, this is the sort of army that I'm expecting to be facing. So it's a, uh, it's a dwarf list and it's a def six spam and it's really good. Uh, so he's got uh, four regiments of iron guard, uh, all with throwing mastiffs, so just a really good uh, amount of uh, one-turn burst shooting. Uh, sharpshooters, he's got three of them. Uh, he's got some Berserker Brock Riders with the boots, and he's got a hunting mastiff, so some good chaff right there. Uh, he's running double steel behemoth, one of which is Gallic. Uh He's running Faber, Ironheart, so he's got a, a lot of shooting, and just like I said, this is a def six... Uh, just you know really tough i think if i was playing my old list i wouldn't have a chance against this list but i think me making the changes bringing in the double giant um i i feel i feel pretty good even though this is this is a pretty good list and he's doing a double dwarf lord so again just a real tough tough list all right so the setup uh, so, yeah, anyone who's playing the Explorers GT would be very familiar with this setup, but, um, you know, just just to go through it, um, Mike over the Explorers, he does like to, uh, he does like to experiment with some of his heights, so he does have a height four hill over there um, in the right, in the middle, so, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting, and I don't mind it to be able to experiment a little bit with heights, so, I get the bottom, so we're going to do our fool's gold here, and uh, this is how we set up. So um, just to keep in mind that um, I'm playing on the bottom, and therefore the one, two, three, four, and 5 are faced my direction, while my opponent, um, his one, two, three, four, five are upside down. So just keep that in mind that when we're playing, um, I, I go ahead and just I, I show what what my numbers are. I feel that the right side is going to be a good side for me. I think that he's going to be a hard time defending that, that with that, that building. So uh, I put my one and my two on that far, right? I, I know I have two militia mobs and, and that's the plan for me. I'm just going to basically take my two militia mobs out of the game just to get an automatic three points. I then put my third one on the far left. Uh, that's the number three. I put one on there. Um, I didn't want to put them at his, his army is very condensed. So I didn't want to put, put my, my other one in the center. And so I was thinking maybe I could slip it in on the far left. So, um, yeah. So going into it, he sets up and that, that number three, actually, you know, hindsight's 2020, but yeah, he, he definitely, he set up a lot more heavily on the left than I was expecting. Um, but, uh, and so for me, I'm pretty certain that 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 three, four, and that upside down three, four, and five on his end is his objectives. So, um, but this is how it ended up being set up. Um, I only rolled a one on the captain redeploy, and so I actually just redeployed captain himself. I, I don't feel this is 
too terrible of a thing. I think that I've got some pretty tough units with that cavalry and the 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 um if I'm gonna have two units over there to hold off that left flank, and all I'm really trying to do is just hold it off is having that that cavalry and having those pikes over there. I then stack the this the the uh the the center, I guess, like technically the right of the battlefield. Um so I, I'm the the plan is is on the left just to hold him off and then to come in and kind of hit the center and sweep into the right. Um maybe to come behind him or to also just cause some flanks. He he is a slower army, so um I'm hoping to kind of sweep uh, sweep the center left. Uh, where he's got that steel behemoth and he's got a lord on the far right. Also, I need to do that because as you see on the bottom right, I've got my two militia mobs. Um, I don't need – if I let that lord um, on his far right get away, um, he's going to go kill those militia mobs. So I also need to just make sure that I, I do crush a little bit of the right flank so that my militia mobs are just going to automatically gain three. So. Uh, yeah, so top of turn one, he gets to go first, and uh, yeah, he moves up, and uh, yeah, he just basically moves up and, and shoots, and oh, this is, you know, this is a dice game, and as you can see on the bottom right, my knights took took nine wounds, and that's just from his long-range fire and Faber. So um, those three gunners, they're in cover, so he's sitting on five. He hits with, I think he hits with... Uh, I think it's like nine out of the 15. So he hits on five, so he hits with nine of them and then wounds on eight and then Faber does one. So I wasn't expecting to take that much damage on turn one with my Knights. And again, I was thinking, well, these guys are pretty tough, but now I'm starting to see just with just one good round of shooting that this left flank is starting to probably crumble a lot faster than I was hoping. So that really, uh, I hate to say, you know, that, first turn of shooting really kind of changed the game a little bit for me i don't think i've lost at this point but i think it's just you know it's it's put me in a lot more of an uncomfortable position than i needed to so definitely a good first turn for him where he's getting those nine wounds on those knights um, all right bottom of turn one so this is my turn here so here i actually just back up the knights i'm trying i, I know he's got those hunting mastiffs and uh I have the speed. I'm, I'm really just trying to preserve those knights for as long as possible. The other thing is I just push up the center. So I need to be more, a little bit more aggressive now. So I, I do just push up. Um, my, my giant just moves up and the captain also, he, he moves in maybe to do some support. I also just back up my pikes. Again, I'm not even try, all I'm trying to do on the left with my knights and my pikes is just delay. And I'm, I'm really trying to just hit that center flank, um, crush the center and then come around to the, uh, come around to the right. So, uh, yeah, but, um, I do actually the, the chariot shoot and they do do one wound on that steel behemoth, um, in the center for him. So, yeah. So a pretty uneventful turn, just me maneuvering. Yeah. I, like I said, I don't have I really don't have any substantial shooting in this army. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So top of turn two. Uh, so on his turn, he just moves up. He does his, uh, he shoots the Knights. Luckily he doesn't roll quite as good and he only does two on them. Um, he throws his hunting masters, but he does shoot my, so he does shoot my other units. Um, his Gallic shoots my, um, shoots my uh pikes on the far left so they take five um i think you know another he's also splitting his fire up i i survived the dogs um that's what my foot guard are there for in the center they take six wounds from the dogs and from shooting um but they're tough and so that's they're they're kind of that fanatic delivery system so uh just having my foot guard uh, take some shots as well uh, you can see I'm repositioning some of my heroes. I'm, I want to start, start clogging things up for him. I, I I really need to kill that like that that hunting mastiffs. I, I really need them dead so I can send in the calf. But I'm just in a really tough spot with already being eleven wounds on the calf. Um, but yeah, so he just moves up. He burns three of his dogs and he just shoots more. Um, yeah. So bottom of turn two. So uh, 
I was at a really tough decision at this point, like I was saying in the previous turn where my cavalry had taken 11 wounds. He's now in range for uh, Gallic is in range now. He could possibly get one of his hunting maps, mastiffs in range. So again, that first turn good shooting has forced my hand one turn early. I wanted to delay sending in those knights for one more turn. But I, I, I in the end, I decided to send in the knights. Um, and so, yeah, I send in the knights. Um, I also got a good flank. This was another really good, uh, a good point for me is that I was able to double charge his, um, um, his uh, leader on the far right. Um, so I, I hit the giant into him and I hit the chariots. So I feel pretty good about killing that leader. I put the, I put the foot guard into, uh, into his, uh, iron guard. I've got that hammer of measured force. I'd love to be able to kill them, but you know, maybe just putting some wounds on them. Those foot guard, they've already taken six wounds and I, I don't think they're going to, to survive much longer. So, you know, again, those foot guard are just really there. I think at the very least I get some wounds on him. So here I roll pretty good with the foot guard, get eight wounds. That's uh, technically one below average. I usually do nine on them, but I roll good on the nerve. So it kind of balances out um, the giant. Another really important thing is the giant and the chariots. They kill the leader, uh, the dwarf Lord on the far right for him. Uh, when I'm saying far right, I'm talking about the center. Um, uh, the only thing is here is that this is a problem with the chariots and their base that I, I wasn't able to pivot. Um, I, I probably need to, as a learning point, I'm going to talk about that, that chariot, uh, legion is very unwieldy and I'm, and I probably don't need to charge him, charge them in with the giants anymore because I wasn't able to, um, I wasn't able to really, so, so he, you see here, the chariots and the giant hit, but because of the chariot base, I, I couldn't pivot the chariots to get within striking distance so instead i didn't want to waste the turn of them like surging forward so i actually just uh, i see the the left flank starting to really get crushed so i actually pivot they've got the brew of haste so they do have a 20 inch move so i'll go ahead and just pivot and i'm i'm, I'm thinking i'm just going to send the chariots into that left flank um so yeah uh yeah and like i said the the knights they blow up the mastiffs i also send one of my heroes into the uh, the Iron Watch uh, just does some wounds. I, I again, those knights. Um, I think they're dead, but um, at eleven wounds, maybe they stick. You don't see it, but the number three uh, in the 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 upside down number three has my standard bear in it. Um, those, uh, yeah. So just keep that in mind. I do have an inspiring bubble. It's just under that upside down number three. So, um. I also do a wound on the dwarf lord for my hero. So, yeah, um, the the center is going pretty good, but the left flank is just is going to be crumbling. So, top of three, uh, yeah, the obvious ones. He's going to charge the um, charge the the knights. Um, they're off the hill, so the knights are probably dead. Uh, he also shoots Gallic, um, who. Gallic's rolling pretty good, and he rolled. A, he actually puts the, the the pikes on ten wounds, so that left flank is just really tough. He also he, so he triple charges the um, the foot guard. He gets he gets his uh, gets his headstrong roll. Um, he puts his iron guard on the far right into my giant just to hold him off. I know the foot guard are probably dead, but that's okay. The foot guard did good. They got eight wounds in. Um, they they protected the fanatic. So. You know, if they die, that's fine. Um, so, yeah, you can kind of see here, everything is kind of going according to plan right now with the center. The left may crumble, but I still feel that I've got the power to break through that line and still and still pressure him on the flank. All right, so yeah, he kills the knights, uh, and then he kills the foot guard. He just backs off into the forest, uh, and you can see his iron watch, uh, his iron guard on the far left surge forward, into my pikes, uh, and then he also frees up his um, frees up his brocks. Um, he he uh, his iron guard hit my hero and waver him. So, uh, but not too bad. And uh, another bit of luck on my part is that he only does three wounds on the hero. So remember that that dwarf lord. If you if you do hit him, he he loses thunderous too. So he's only crushed one. So the hero actually sticks. So that's pretty good. Uh, and yeah. 
So bottom up three. So here, this is the turn I need. So I send in the fanatics. Uh, I also send my giant into uh, his favor. And I send my captain into his lord. I just need to hold off that lord. So I do that. I, I also just, uh, I march forward the chariots. Uh, I think I shoot into his iron guard. The the pikes just pivot. and the So the pikes pop the dragon shard shield. So Again, Dragon Shard Shield's really great on the pikes. I know they're probably dead, but that Dragon Shard Shield's going to protect them one more turn. That's why I like the Dragon Shard Shield and the pikes so much. It generally gives me one more turn of them being alive. And that's all I really need. Um, so, yeah, um, going into it, uh, disaster with the double ones. So I do kill Favor with the giant. That's good. But I do 20 wounds on the Iron Guard. And I roll double ones. And, you know, like uh, I'll talk about this, but just uh, at the end of the game, but I just, I, I think I'm getting just, I think I'm really just starting to get over the double ones thing. But we'll talk about that later. But that, that pretty much double ones kind of ruins my plan, right? Those, you know, I was really supposed to kill those Iron Guard, turn those fanatics, and then the fanatics and the giant on the far right were going to clean up that flank. Another thing that really does is it's a ripple effect, right? Because I don't kill those Iron Guard, that giant in the center with the three wounds, he was supposed to turn and face the Dwarf Lord and begin kind of this flank where I could kind of, you know, protect him. You know, those even if they take a flank from the Iron Guard, that's not a big deal. But I can't do that now. Now I have to devote that giant. He has to stay focused on the center because it's like I need an additional resource now to clear that 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 center flank. So really annoying. Uh, I, I just I'll, get, I'll talk about this more, but I just I think I'm over the double ones uh, in this game anyway. Um, but yeah, I, that's that's a tough one. But um, I still think I'm doing OK. I just that double ones really hurt me. Um yeah, I send a hero into the Brox. I know the Brox are fast, and he's he's definitely gunning for that number three. So we do reveal, and my suspicions are confirmed. He puts he has put all of his tokens on that far left. He's got his two, and he's got his one right behind my pikes, and he's got his other one right beside my standard bearer. So yeah, um, I do have my one, and that's you know, hindsight is 2020, but me putting mine this is this is definitely a mistake on my end where i i mean like i said it's hindsight is 2020 where i put that i put one of my ones on his top left flank so i've i've really kind of given him one um i don't like to necessarily say it was a mistake but i definitely like hindsight is 2020 i, I would have loved if i would have put my one right beside that giant so you see my number two that would have been great. But, you know, it, like I said, hindsight is twenty twenty. Uh, Yeah, so a tough turn for me. A very tough turn for me. So top of turn four. Um, so he sends uh, Gallic and his Iron Guard into my, uh, into my pikes. They do have the Dragon Shard Shield. So, again, Dragon Shard Shield, they're, they're probably going to stick. They make it wavered. But they do, and, and they do stick, as you can see here. Uh, I didn't do the transition here, but yeah, he does 13 wounds, um, um, and he, uh, they stick, the pike stick. Uh, remember, the Iron Guard are coming through, they're, right, they're, they're hindered, and they're also facing that ensnare. So um, he also puts, yeah, he, he uh, combo charges my fanatics, uh, and he does 13 wounds on them. Uh, he wavers my hero, which is fine. He also gets a flank into my giant and does four wounds. Uh, you know, again, uh, not the worst thing. The giant's pretty tough. And again, those dwarf lords, if you can just, if you can do that, that, that wound on them, they're a lot less powerful, just losing that thunderous too. So like I said, at the very least, my fanatics stay in the game. Um, and yeah, so uh, and and my pikes stay. So I had a I had a pretty good turn that one in the sense that he didn't kill my pikes. My pikes do stick that one extra round, and my fanatics don't die. So uh, bottom of four. So uh, here I just um, yeah here I I counter charge 
Uh, I actually countercharge Steel Behemoth and I pop the blood on the Fanatics. Uh, I then, uh, the, you know, the giant hits the, the 20 wound Iron Guard. And then I also countercharge into his Lord with my second giant. Roll, I, I, my giants, I would say this, you know, in my favor, my giants have rolled pretty good this game. I think I roll like a 10 and get 18 hits into his, uh, his Lord and I kill him. Um, the other thing is, thing is that my uh, my chariots get actually a rear charge into his iron guard. But the problem is, is that, you know, this is the big disadvantage with chariots is that if they are hindered, they're really useless. Like, uh, you know, losing their thunderous, um, and, uh, and, uh, thunderous one, but really, and the hitting on fives, it's just, you know, it's not good. I did Bane chant them, but it, it just wasn't enough. Uh, and um, I also counter charge with my pikes into them, but again, that def six is great. I only do eight wounds, and that that iron that iron um, that iron guard stick on the bottom right, and I really needed them to to die. So that's tough. Also, because they stick, my my chariots are in the flank. But I it's a, it's a desperation move at this point. Um, I'm I'm behind. I know I'm behind. And I just, I was really trying and I just, it, it was, I was, like I said, I was at this point when you're behind, you have to take, uh, you do have to take more chances. So yeah, the chariots, uh, they don't, they don't take out those iron watch. So that sucks. The, I'm sorry, that iron guard. All right. Top of five. So with him, you know, the obvious ones, he charges his, uh, charges his, uh, brocks into my flank. He puts Gallic into my um, uh, into my pike, so they're at twenty wounds now. Um, so the pikes are going to die. Um, he he goes ahead and just sends in his his uh, his um, sharpshooters. So his his third sharpshooter has slowly moved over and grabbed that objective. He sends his other sharpshooter regiment into the flank of my giant, really just there to stop me from probably getting a charge onto those uh, those sharpshooters. So he's playing very well and that he's just delaying me now. Um, the giant uh, does kill. Uh, and so he's he's going to, the giant's pretty out of position. So I'm going to try, I'm thinking about turn seven now, and I'm going to try to get that giant to contest uh, the number one that's uh, right up, that's right by the chariot. So here, because I think I've lost, I lost the three objectives on the far left. And so I'm really trying to just, grab that center one um but yeah so for him uh he goes in here he flanks my flanks my chariots and then flanks my giant so he kills the pikes and the iron guard they move forward and they capture that objective on the bottom left and then yeah he he does like 20 wounds on my 24 wounds on my chariots they die so brock's turn and face yeah that's tough uh, that's tough bottom of five so i send my uh i send my hero uh so the first thing is as i run 14 inches straight up with that giant just so he can contest i also send my i, I need to slow down those brocks because remember his his iron guard and Gallic can't really they're going to have to stay on this objective so i need those brocks to just be pinned for like a turn where I can just hold them. I've got two heroes. You know, I can have one turn where I hit them and the second turn where I hit them. And um, I'm hoping to just to chaff up those Brocks and keep them away from that objective. Uh, we go into the Iron Guard. We do nine wounds on them with the Giant and the Captain, but the Iron Guard stick. The other thing is that my hero on those Brocks does not do a single wound. So that is another really, I, I haven't had bad rolls this game, but I've definitely had some bad key rolls. And this is the other one where I don't wound the Brocks. So now they're free to charge the hero with four wounds and to, more importantly, to get within three inches of that objective. So that sucks. Um, yeah. Uh, but um the giant and the captain, they also they 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 really needed to break the iron guard to get through. Um, but they don't. And so yeah, he just uh that's that's a rough turn. I got nine wounds on the iron guard, but um 
you know, I, I don't roll the nerve and I'm not able to blow them up. Even if I waver them, that doesn't matter. I needed those iron, that, that iron guard with the giant. I needed the giant and the captain to kill those iron guard. So, well, it is what it is. All right. Top six. So for him, uh, yeah, he, he does the obvious. He uh, runs past my six wound hero and he charges my four wound hero. And now he's within three inches. Um, he also just counter charges the giant. Um, uh, and he turns Gallic, uh, to this isn't shown, but you know, like I said, we're playing here and I think we're a little bent for time, but, but Gallic actually just turns around and shoots the hero with six wounds. So we didn't actually turn, we, you know, we're kind of playing a little quicker. So we know that Gallic turned around and shot the hero and yeah, he, um, he kills the hero. He actually was going to overrun into the like, standard bear, but he rolled the one. So, eh, you know, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, but he does roll pretty well on the giant and he takes out my giant, which really sucks. I needed that second giant. So, um, you know, my, uh, he then, uh, after killing the giant, he actually, he sees that I could charge with the captain. So he very smartly sidesteps the iron guard to block the captain from trying to hit those brocks. All right. Bottom of six. So I, I really need to turn seven here. So I do just move my giant. Um, and yeah, I'm just hoping for turn seven, a bit of luck on my part is actually the captain does, I think he does like two wounds and I roll pretty good and I do kill those iron guard. Now they're not inspired. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I do roll pretty good and kill the iron guard. So that finally I've actually, I needed this a turn earlier. I needed the giant and the captain to be where the captain is now a turn earlier, but, uh, yeah, you know, it is what it is. Um, I just need the turn seven, but wouldn't you believe it? I don't get the turn seven. So uh, this is the end of the game. It's a five, three victory. So, um, you know, the Brocks are there. They're able to um, out unit strength, the giant and yeah, a five, three victory to the dwarves. Um, you know, I, I can play a little bit. Like I said, it's always frustrating with double ones and just, I, I had some, he, he did have some good rolls, but I think the rolls maybe generally balanced out. He probably rolled a little better than me, but I also think that he just played better than me. He um, I'm going to go back one and I'll show you that. I think that he he played this scenario a lot better, and I think he was really smart. He knew, he had a game plan going in, and I I really I, I gave him one objective for free. I, I think that with the, the rolls being what they were, if I would have moved that objective, one of my objectives at the top left, I would have moved it to the center. This could have easily been a tie. So even with some bad rolls, I definitely, um, I definitely didn't play the scenario as well as my opponent. So he played better than me, you know, and uh, we can complain about rolls, but he, he played very well. He's a great player and uh, I want to play him again because I always like to try to get vengeance. So uh, I, uh, I had fun, you know, and uh, I, yeah, so he won, but I think the winning, I would say more importantly for me, I learned a lot. Um, and that's more important. Winning and losing to me isn't as important as like learning. And so what 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 do I what did I learn? One of the things is that I would do what my opponent did, and that is going with these objectives like fool's gold. I think that it can obfuscate the idea that you really just want to go in with a very clear plan like he did. He knew. And he wasn't trying to hide it. I think that I was trying to get too fancy with trying to, oh, I'm going to try and trick him. He basically didn't care about what I did. He went in with a clear plan. And I thought that was really smart. Um, you know, for me, it's it's funny because I play Mage Knight and we we're, we're we have a house rule for me playing with my friends with Mage Knight that we're actually just, we're ignoring the double ones and double sixes in Mage Knight. And um, I, I'm I'm thinking about doing that myself. I, I think that, you know, I've looking back on my years playing Kings of War, I've had too many games where double ones either taint my victory. In other words, I win, but I feel that the victory is tainted because he rolled some double ones. And, and the other thing is that I, I've I've also so double ones have have blessed me and cursed me. I would say this for me, and maybe the rules committee are listening. I don't think this is a very fun rule. Um, I think that, and this is something I'm going to be house ruling when I play my game. If my opponent agrees just for fun games, 
I'm going to try this rule out where basically, you know, ones just count towards the unit. You know, in other words, it's just going to add two. And if double ones gets you an automatic kill, that's what it happens. The other thing is, I think as well, getting rid of the double sixes always. If double sixes, you know, reach enough to actually waver them, that's fine. But I, I don't like this double sixes. So that's something that I'm going to be trying. It's just kind of a house rule for me if my opponent agrees on these games. I think um, I think it's going to make all my games more efficient. Uh, anyway, I, I would, I, I think that in a game like Kings of War, that is, I really love that it's so strategic. I, I really don't like this rule that it's, that really takes all these plans and just kind of ruins the one bad rule. I, I see that a lot of like, I know up at Lone Wolf, uh, you know, Mark, he's, he's giving us basically a reroll just because of this. And I, I think that if TOs, like, I, I think that if like team organizations events are seeing this as a problem, if they're willing to give us rerolls, I think that's, I think that's saying something about this rule that maybe the double ones and double sixes rule just needs to, um, needs to go. Anyway, um, yeah, I just think that they should just be destroyed. Um, that being said, you know, uh, I had a really, uh, I think my army played well. I, I really am thinking about a third giant, um, but I thought the chariots did well. Um, I, I learned a lot about how to, to position them and charge with them. I need to charge with them with a bigger unit. That's a, that's a horde that, that horde can turn and then give the chariots the space they need. So the ch the chariots are real interesting, but I I, I do want to run them again. I do like them, and uh, I, I learned a lot this game. Like I said, you learn more in your your losses than your victories. So yeah, it's it's, it's it was great for that.